Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with My Security Media and Australia in Space magazine. We're joined again by Peter Nikoloff, the executive director with the Andy Thomas Space Foundation. We're going to be walking through the streams for the 17th Australian Space Forum in Adelaide, uh, just a few short weeks away. Peter, thanks for joining us again. Not a problem at all. Enjoy chatting with you. <laughs> That's good. Uh, now you've got day two. So day one's plenary sessions uh, all day, but then day two, you really dive down into the uh, sort of the media part of the, the space sector, uh, but with multiple streams. Walk us through some of the, the key streams that you've got. And these are involving a, a range of panelists uh, as well. Yeah, no, certainly can do that. Just to remind people that if you haven't been onto the website, the overall focus for the the forum this year is a really a resilient space sector uh, vital for sustainable future. So that's what we're really encouraging people to focus on resilience and sustainability, which is, I guess, close to everyone's heart. Um, so we've got um, oh, gee, at least a dozen, about a dozen sessions um, on day two. And this is uh, by popular demand as well, where there's so much material out there. People want to get their messages out to the industry, which is very important. Um, we've got a session on defence and national security um, the next decade. We've got some excellent highlight speakers there from the both industry and space command. So that's going to be very exciting. And also um, from uh, defence science technology. So that'll give us a good picture of, of where we're going from the national security perspective in space. And that's where our biggest investment is in the country at this stage. Uh, defence budget, I think, just for this next generation space technologies over the next decade is over $10 billion. And we've got to make sure we spend that. That's just on space related activity. So make sure we got to focus that properly in this, uh, I guess, troubling world we've got here today. Um, then, then we've got a session on enabling technology. So with that session, we do touch the various areas which are really uh, starting to elevate themselves. Uh, and Australia's got some leading activity there. So that includes laser communications, to space, quantum technology, how that can improve uh, encryption and, and even sensing from space. Um, artificial intelligence is really the, the uh, up and coming technology, especially if you've got thousands of spacecraft up there. Um, and uh, cyber is also very important. So that, that's gonna be a very exciting session as well. Sovereign launch has always been a, a high profile in Australia, as well debated technology on how serious with sovereign launch, but we will be talking to not only launch providers, but also some of our, our launch sites uh, that are being developed in the country. Again, great capabilities evolving over the coming years there. Uh, we want to touch on that. that one though, Peter, you've got the, the key players there, Gilmore, Southern Launch, uh, ELA, uh, and then yeah, you've also got Rocket Lab and the exploration company as well as that's moderated uh, by the Office of the Space Regulator, the Australian Space Agency. So that's going to be a great panel. It will be. It will be fantastic. And the, the, if you if you kept your eye on the media in the past for this, it's, it can be a very hot topic on, on where we go. What, what, what's the policy for Australia? Are we investing enough in having sovereign launch? So there's one thing down to build a spacecraft, but if you're stuck in a, a tough situation and you have to send it overseas and there's a lot of constraints in doing those sort of things, you, you often want to do have something in country for responsive space, which is something that defence yep. have talked about for years, having the responsive space capability. So, yeah, no, the regulator there is going to be a good addition to that. Well, I'm, I'm impressed you've got the regulator to moderate that particular panel. So that's that's great. I think, and yeah. I think that uh, that sort of live robust discussion uh, is a good thing. I think that's what the the whole purpose of the Australian Space Forum is there, uh, just to provide that opportunity. Yeah, no, exactly right. Um, then we've also got a session on our sector achievements. So looking at some of the projects, some moments of national pride and, and lessons learned. I guess the important thing we want to take out of that one is that space is hard and you can't um, can't go with just a, a one launch option. You need to be prepared to um, live through failures, learn, develop and keep moving on. And that's what we want to erase there. A lot of people in the general public sort of don't understand that that sort of phase that you need to go through when you're developing new com um, companies and technologies there. So that's going to be a good one there as well. So we'll have, we'll talk about some of the launches which are coming up and what they should have, some of the, the spacecraft going to space should be up there by the time we, we 
uh, have the conference in the end of July there. So including uh, the South Australian satellite Canini, which with my another hat on, I'm the mission director of that spacecraft and we'll be heading over to the US to watch the launch. So super exciting for Australia and the South Australian government with respect to that, that spacecraft there. But we're also talking about other spacecraft on that launch. We've got a couple from New South Wales, Waratah Seed and Quava. We've got um, Space Machines talking about their challenges they've had. Um, so I know it'll be a good session. And I think it's important that we get those lessons out there. Absolutely. And I, I suppose uh, to finish off the day, you've got uh, space sector economics and investment as well covered. We certainly do. There's been big, big releases on uh, economic studies for space, uh, $1.8 trillion of growth in the coming decade. So we'll be certainly talking about that and how the Australian sector is going within its investment. Are we getting our fair share investment for, for the industry? But we also have another exciting session on human space flight as well. Yep. Again, which sort of aligns with Catherine Vanell Pegg's um, uh, return to Australia, anyway, as well. Wonderful. Well, look, we'll give the um, your key supporting partners a plug as well. The Government of South Australia, South Australian Space Industry Centre, and the Australian Space Agency, with the platinum sponsor AMDA Foundation uh, as well. And uh, we've already mentioned uh, how many exhibitors you've got on the show floor. So there's plenty to see. Uh, but day two uh, looks like you're going to be struggling to decide which stream you want to go to. That is that will be the challenge. So get your tickets early. They're selling fast. So definitely uh, we'd love to see you there in Adelaide. Uh, so there, be quick. We'll have the links in the show notes. It's the 24th to the 25th of July uh, in Adelaide for the 17th Australian Space Forum. Peter Nikoloff, the Executive Director with the Andy Thomas Space Foundation. Thank you very much for joining us again on Australian Space TV. Thanks, Chris.